Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of In My Opinion. Now, if you weren't able to see the post I made on this, this is just a little thing that I came up with, and it's a way for me to express my opinions about these devices and hopefully give some useful insights or just insights in general. I don't mean for any of the things I talk about in this video or videos like this one to influence anybody, but just more or less to kind of give my standpoint on certain things and maybe see if you know, people have different standpoints. I mean, you know, overall, I'm open to every single opinion and I am very willing to say that my opinions are not perfect and they could definitely be wrong. But that's the whole thing about learning. And I also want to challenge myself to just kind of see if there's something else I'm not thinking about or if my opinions are limited. So with that being said, yes, you have read right and your eyes have not deceived you. I... A Note fan since I owned my first Galaxy Note, which happened to be a Galaxy Note 2, and returning the S22 Ultra. I've had it for about over a week, and I just made the decision to box it up and send it back to Samsung a few days ago. So you're probably curious as to how I came to this decision. Well, I'm going to give you my seven reasons as to why I came to this decision and why the S22 Ultra is not for me personally. Now, before we get started, let me just reiterate and say again, everything you're about to hear is my personal standpoint. These are strictly my opinions, and I don't expect them to be one that everybody is going to agree with. Like I said, also, I'm open to other opinions as long as they're presented in a mature manner and not conveyed like an angsty teenager trying to prove a point. No offense to non-angsty teenagers not trying to prove a point. And I actually encourage discussion within the comment section of my videos. Um, but what I don't stand for is disrespect in any form towards myself or someone else. And of course, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So reason number one is the display size and shape. And let me preface this by saying that I think that the pandemic has forever changed the world in many ways. And one thing it did change for most people is how they work with the technology they purchase. We started to require not only bigger screens, but more of them. And we started to require more flexibility with the technology we use on a daily basis. So in saying that, that is why the display of the S22 Ultra doesn't work for me personally. As I mentioned before, I've been a Note fan, user and owner all the way from the Galaxy Note 2 up until the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And yes, I've even owned the Note 7, which if none of you remember had that, you know, that thing going on, I won't I won't kick them while they're down or while they were down. So as far as I can remember, each year I would anticipate when a new note was going to be released and how excited I was for it. At that time, I never thought something like the pandemic we are currently in could happen. And now that it has, I realized that the display on the S22 Ultra, although it is by far one of the best displays on the market you can get your hands on, it won't work for me because of the shape and the size. So originally when I got my Fold 3, I was working in a position where I had to access a VDI or virtual desktop interface for those not familiar with the acronym. This means that I was constantly doing work that I would normally do on a laptop now on my phone. And I had tried this setup on my S21 Ultra when I owned it, and that device is very similar in shape to the S22 Ultra, being that it is another candy bar phone, and when I got my Fold, I realized that I was getting something I didn't know that I wanted, much less knew that I needed. What I'm really getting at is that, personally, I think that there are certain individuals out there like myself, and maybe we are a few, but we still exist, where the S22 Ultra display, as big as it is, is still too small. As a matter of fact, it's actually 0.1 smaller than the display on the Note 20 Ultra, and that may have been something that Samsung decided to do based on research or whatever have you. But overall, you're still getting a 0.1 smaller phone and sometimes that can make a difference, albeit if it's a little one, it still does. All in all, it just came down to the fact that I required a portable device that was going to allow me to do more 
than I was actually doing previously. I needed something that was going to allow me to view more content than I've ever had to view before. And the Fold has given me that, even though I believe it can also get better. Number two reason for returning the S22 Ultra is the design and usability. So for as long as I can remember, I've been able to use a note device one-handed and being that the S22 Ultra is the spiritual successor to the note line, you think the same thing would be true here, but I actually find it a little difficult to use one-handed and I don't even have a case on this thing. So normally I would do this little sort of hand motion when I was using a note series where I would just kind of use my pinky right here basically to hold the bottom of it and stretch all the way up and believe me I had to actually do this a little bit more than you would think. So overall the thing with the fold that I get is that you know this is a 6.2 inch screen as opposed to 6.8. This is perfectly one handed for me. Um, I still have to stretch my thumb a little bit but not to the point where I can feel my tendons like sort of stretching. I know that's a little bit weird to say or too much information, but it's just overall when using the cover display on the fold, I feel like this is kind of a perfect size. And if I need that bigger screen, of course, I can just go ahead and open it up and use it comfortably. And I'm going to be able to use this with two hands, of course. Now, in saying this, I suppose I am spoiled by the Fold's one-handedness when using the cover screen. It's not that I can't get used to using it, but I think in my case at least, I never thought that there could be a device that was both a good size when using it one-handed and also at the same time bigger than the device I had been using before I got my Fold, which was the S21 Ultra. But I had been using the Note 20 Ultra before that. Either way, you get the point. Number three reason is the color of the device. Now, let me say, I have watched every Galaxy Unpacked for as long as I can remember. And I was even fortunate enough to attend the Galaxy S4 Unpacked event. I remember getting pretty excited for every piece of information with the exception of one, the color choices. Each time I saw a cool color my next phone was going to be available in, I was met with the disappointment of the fact that that particular color would only be available in another part of the world. In fact, one prime example was the Emerald Green Galaxy S6 Edge. That was a phone I got crazy excited over seeing since green used to be my favorite color. But of course, it wasn't available in the US. Fast forward to today and now the S22 Ultra comes in seven different colors and two of those colors caught my eye this time. And they were both available, but one piqued my interest more, which was the red colored S22 Ultra. Now, this particular color is one of the Samsung exclusive special orders, which means that it takes either four to five weeks to ship or even sometimes up to six to seven weeks to ship. In my case, I put in my order on March 7th and got it on March 29th. Of course, this is lower than the projected delivery time and I was grateful for that. But when I got the phone, I was disappointed. And I was disappointed because this isn't red, it's salmon. Like, this is not red. This is red. My, my little Surface Arc mouse right here, this is red. Maybe in some places, Salmon may be considered a hue of red to some people, but when I hear red, I'm expecting red. I'm talking Mazda CX-5 red, which is by far the best looking red I've ever seen. So yeah, all in all, I'm not feeling this Salmon colored phone, and it's put a bad taste in my mouth, honestly. So yeah, another reason as to why I'm not keeping this phone is that I just feel a little deceived by this salmon colored red, non-red phone. So my fourth reason is the software differences. So the One UI version of Samsung software is its best yet. Hands down, no questions asked. It's sleek, it's fast and it's very user friendly while still allowing for some advanced configuration if you choose to go that route. Now, I've been using Samsung devices since TouchWiz was a thing, and One UI is definitely a godsend and something I appreciate having on any Samsung device I use, including the S22 Ultra. However, as much as I enjoy using it on 
the S22 Ultra, I enjoy using it a little bit more on the fold because of the little software updates Samsung has made to make it take advantage of the fold's unique design. For instance, one of the things that I can do on my fold that I cannot do on the S22 Ultra is use three apps at the same time in the multi-window format. So as you can see here, I have this completely unrealistic example where I can use Word, Samsung Notes, and a calculator. Whereas on the S22 Ultra, I can only do Word and Samsung Notes. Now, of course, there definitely is pop-up view, but overall that would actually hinder me from seeing content on both of the apps I'm using in multi-window format. Whereas even if I was to use pop-up window on the fold, I could still move that screen over to the bottom right here and keep all three apps open and move them around as I please. Another example of this would actually be Samsung Notes itself. So one of the things you can do with Samsung Notes on the fold that you can't do on the S22 Ultra is you can actually have all these submenu options situated here at the bottom and the toolbar situated to the side. So as you can see, this toolbar here is exactly the same as this one here. However, if I was to go into, let's say typing mode and go to the option right here, the text options, you'll notice that to bold the text or even to underline the text, I'd have to go into this submenu here. Whereas on the fold, I already have that bar readily available right here on the bottom. And this is obviously a first world issue, but it's something I've grown to appreciate on the fold. Another example is the fact that you're able to have two different home screens for both the cover display and the main display of the fold. It might not seem like a big deal, but it's still another thing that I appreciate since it allows me to optimize my workflow based on which screen I'm using. So for my example I have here, I have Samsung TV+, Plus, YouTube, and the Xbox app. But if I open up the fold, you can see here I have the headphones app for my headphones, Excel, Chrome, Feedly, which is an RSS feeder, and a Samsung Notes widget. So I can go ahead and customize that to really anything I like, and I do appreciate that, because sometimes I don't wanna to try to fit every single thing I actually need on just one screen. And like I said, the Fold is one of those devices that I never really knew that I wanted until I got it, um, or I never really knew that I desired until I got it. So I do appreciate that Samsung went that way and allowed you to have two different home screens. There are other apps out there that drive this home for me like Excel, which I know I use as an example all the time. YouTube, which in all honesty doesn't provide a ridiculous advantage, but it still provides some at least. And all in all, I just appreciate the view I get with the Fold, even with that crease over here, which actually doesn't bother me because it really disappears depending on the content you're looking at anyway. And even if you do see it, it's probably something you're gonna get used to, just like we've had to get used to in some way, shape, or form, having bigger phones when there weren't any back in the day. My fifth reason is the battery life. Now, there might be some heads tilting, and I know that this is probably one of the strangest reasons to return this device, being that it does have a significantly larger battery than the Fold. But if you stay on the surface with that information and take the 5,000 milliamp battery at face value, then you're most likely not seeing the whole picture. What I mean by that is the one thing we all forget is that the parts inside of your phone need to draw power from somewhere. With the biggest power drain coming from the display, and all of the other background operation things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Also keep in mind things like temperature of those parts. That being said, I can say that the S22 Ultra's battery life is definitely better than the Fold's, but can I say it's amazing to the point where it's worth it? Personally, for me, no. Now, before you pull out the pitchforks and call blasphemy, let me explain. While using the S22 Ultra, I realized that I had to spend more time doing things that I'd normally be able to do on my Fold in a few minutes. This meant that I had to have the display on longer, and in certain cases, I had to adjust the brightness and zoom in and out more frequently than I usually did with my Fold. This contributed to the battery life dropping about 9% in most cases when I was doing the specific task, 
And before someone says, well, you should have used a laptop or a tablet, I'll just tell you in those moments, that wouldn't have been an optimal thing to do. Now, like I said, the battery life I got out of this device was definitely better than what I got out of this one. But I also don't get horrible battery life on my Fold either. I've never had it die on me during the day and I use both devices the same amount I usually do when I was testing out the S22 Ultra. But to drive that point home, yes, the S22 Ultra does have a bigger battery, but with all the advancements made in technology, the problem with that bigger battery is that it's usually put in a device to circumvent or sort of to siphon out the other parts, if I'm using those words correctly, to siphon out the other parts drawing so much power. Sixth reason is the camera. This reason here is a foot and mouth moment. And if you've seen some of the content I've created on my channel, you've probably heard me say that the only reason I buy new phones is for the camera upgrade. It's not that it isn't still an important factor, but after reevaluating my expectations of the potential products I purchase and the ones I already owned, I realized that having a really good camera wasn't as important as I thought it was to me. Out of the 11,429 items in my gallery on my fold, 379 of those items being videos and the rest being pictures, I realized that I just don't see or go back to look for most of those pictures or videos I've taken. They sit there occupying 126 gigabytes out of the 461.70 gigabytes of internal storage I have on my fold and 216 of those photos and three videos I've taken are saved as favorites and even those are something I rarely look at. What amazed me with the Note 20 Ultra is its space zoom technology. I remember the first time I took a picture of the moon and how excited I was to see how good, in my opinion at least, it came out. I remember the feeling of finally having a device that I could use to view the stars in the sky in a detail I could have never hoped to have achieved before with using a smartphone. There is absolutely, positively no doubt that the S22 Ultra takes the thing that I love so much about my Note 20 Ultra and improves upon it in a meaningful way. But if those improvements are just minor, even though they are meaningful, then I had to start asking myself some questions, which is what I did. Obviously, I came to the conclusion that the camera alone just wasn't worth me, and I'm saying me personally, justifying an upgrade. Now, let's be clear. The Fold does not, and I repeat, the Fold does not take the same fine quality pictures that the S22 Ultra does, but it also doesn't take outrageously bad ones either. At least not if you're not talking about that under display camera, which I, I don't even use that thing at all. As a matter of fact, I've taken some of my best photos on the Fold and it's a camera I've come to learn how to make the most out of. Overall, the camera in the S22 Ultra, while ways above the Fold and most other phones out there, just isn't as full of value for me as I had previously thought it would be. The last reason for my return is the S Pen experience. On the phone side of things, the only other phone that comes with an S Pen and the place for it to be stored is the Note 20 series. Now, if I didn't say this, or if I did, then excuse me. The reason I originally bought the Fold is because it was the first foldable device to use the S Pen, have water resistance, and to utilize a bigger screen for me to write my notes on without having to rely on my tablet all the time. Now, I've also admitted this before, but I don't actually use my S Pen as much as I should or could, but when I do use it, I want it to be able to take notes in a fashion that's convenient and spacious. The S22 Ultra does cover the convenience portion, but in my opinion, doesn't do the best in the space category. Sure, I've used it to take notes with no issue and have always never really had a problem doing so on the previous Note devices I've owned, but the Fold, even with all of its flaws, including that crease in the middle, offers more space hands down. 
As you can actually see from this example here, I basically wrote the same exact thing on both devices here. And you can see on the fold, it's taken only two lines for me to write that, whereas on the S22 Ultra, it's taken me four. Now, of course, this is definitely a problem with just the way I write personally, but that is the whole thing about the way people write. It's very unique to them, it's very personal to them, and overall, it's just something that you don't really wanna compromise or sort of have to get used to on every single thing you are writing on. It's just that with the Fold, I found myself scrolling less and writing more when using Samsung Notes and the S Pen, which is honestly something I never thought would have been possible before the Fold's existence. And I'm speaking in terms of a handheld device, of course. The other factor about the S Pen experience in general is that it really hasn't changed much since the Note 9 when they added the ability to use it as a remote control gesture device. Now, yes, I don't have the feature on the Fold without using the S Pen Pro, but again, like in some of the other reasons I've mentioned in this video, it was something that I thought I needed more than I actually did. My primary use for those air actions were actually to take pictures of my wife and I when we were traveling, since I don't like strangers and even friends touching my phone. Funny enough, I actually told my wife the other day that she is literally the only person that has full access to my phone, so she'd be the only one I would allow to use it, but obviously when we are both trying to take pictures, that's not possible. So the remote gestures were a nice touch for those moments. But the fact of the matter is I can now take pictures using my Galaxy Watch 4 and anybody can using most smartwatches or even dedicated remotes you can find on Amazon. Other than these attributes though, the S Pen experience is the same as it's always been and that's not a bad thing at all. But why would I pay for the same experience on a newer device when even if I can't get that one feature, I can still use about 95% of the other features with the device I own already. So to summarize everything up, I want to make sure that I say that the S22 Ultra is a phenomenal phone. It brings together the things that Note fans care about while still being able to appeal to non-Note users. Everything about the phone is great to near excellent. The build quality, the cameras, the battery, the built-in S Pen, etc. In some ways, I think it's a worthy upgrade to the aging Note 20 Ultra, but for me, I personally just couldn't feel that feeling I used to get when purchasing a new Note series device, even though, yes, this is now an S series device. If I'm being honest, like totally honest, it feels like a device that was made to appease rather than to continue the tradition of having that one device that represents the pinnacle of what Samsung has to offer. More like a Note 20 Ultra S, no pun intended. I still think that there are things Samsung can do with this form factor, and I'm sure they will in the future, but for me, the Fold is where it's at. It's the device that gets close to all the things I had been wishing the Note was when I owned it. It is by no means at all a perfect device, and rightfully so since it's the third iteration, it's also not cheap and not accessible at all. And I wouldn't even have one if I wasn't lucky enough to have two devices to trade in for it. But I do think it's definitely on the right track to becoming the evolution of a series of phones that Samsung could possibly be doing more with as opposed to just rebranding and throwing in a few minor major upgrades just to appease. So if you've made it this far, I wanna say Thank you for watching this video and listening to my personal opinion. I'm really looking forward to seeing what all of you think and also finding out what the Note series and S22 Ultra means to you. I'm also curious about what people feel about the Fold. And of course, like I mentioned before, please, please, please keep any comments respectful and be aware again that this video was meant to be my unique opinion and not a direction for anybody to follow. And with that, as always, have a good night or good morning wherever you are in the world. Um, I guess I should include good evening too though, right? Anyways, see you in the next video.